بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس دس از حمزہ نور اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو سالو انٹرنیشنل اے لیول ایڈکسل میکینکس ایم ون جنوری ٹو تھاؤزینڈ ٹوینٹی ٹو پیپر اینڈ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو اپلوڈ سیپریٹ ویڈیوز فار ایچ اینڈ ایوری کوشچن اینڈ ان دس پرٹیکولر ویڈیو آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو سالو کوشچن نمبر ون سو اٹ سیز دیٹ اے پارٹیکل پی آف ویٹ فائیو نیوٹن از اٹیچڈ ٹو ون اینڈ آف اے لائٹ ان ایکسٹینسیبل اسٹرنگ The other end of a string is attached to a fixed point O. The particle P is held in equilibrium by a force of magnitude F newtons. And it says that direction of this force is perpendicular to the string. And OP makes an angle of 60 degree with the vertical as shown in figure 1. So requirement of part A is to find the value of F. And the requirement of part B is to find the tension in the string. Okay, so first of all, we are going to find the value of F. So what we are going to do, we are going to resolve the forces horizontally and vertically. So the weight of the particle is 5 Newton. So it is acting vertically downwards. And as we know that OP is basically the string. Okay, so when I'm referring to the particle P, so the tension in the string is moving away from the particle P like this. So this T will have a horizontal component of P cos this angle and this angle would be 180 minus 90 minus 60. So the horizontal component is T cos 30 towards left and the vertical component is T sine 30 upwards. And then we have a force of magnitude F Newton which is inclined at this angle and this angle would be 180 minus 90 minus 30 which is supposed to be 60 degrees as simple as that and the horizontal component of this f force is f cos 60 towards right and the vertical component is f sin 60 which is acting upwards so far we have marked all of the components over here all of the forces acting on the particle so as we know the fact that the particle is in equilibrium so we can say that the sum of the forces acting horizontally or vertically is equal to zero so therefore we can say that sum of the forces acting in the x direction is equal to zero and we can also say that the sum of the forces acting in the y direction is equal to zero if we find out the sum of the forces acting horizontally so this will be f cos 60 minus t cos 30 and this whole thing will be equal to 0. So now as we know the fact that in part a we need to find the value of f. So we need to eliminate the variable of t. Eliminating the variable t means you have to make t the subject. So f cos 60 divided by cos 30 will be equals to t. So cos 60 divided by cos 30 this is supposed to be under root 3 over 3. So therefore, we can say that T is equals to under root 3 over 3 multiplied by F. So here we have our first equation which is connecting T and F. Now we are going to form an other equation by finding the sum of the forces acting vertically. Okay, so we can say that F sine 60 plus T sine 30 minus 5 is equals to 0. Okay. So as we know that in part A we are required to find the value of F. So we are going to eliminate the variable T meaning we are making T the subject over here. So in equation number one we have already made T the subject. So what we are going to do we are going to substitute this into this equation. Okay. We are going to substitute equation number one in this equation. So F sine 60 plus under root 3 over 3 into F multiply by sine 30 and then minus 5 and this whole thing is equal to 0 and the value of sine 60 the exact value of sine 60 is under root 3 over 2 so under root 3 over 2 into F plus under root 3 over 3 into F into half since the exact value of sine 30 is half and then minus 5 and this whole thing is equal to 0 and now we can find the value of F by solving this equation. So this is supposed to be under root 3 over 2 into f plus under root 3 over 6 into f is equals to 5. So taking f common multiplied by under root 3 over 2 
plus under root 3 over 6 and this whole thing is equal to 5. So therefore the sum of root 3 over 2 and root 3 over 6 this is supposed to be 2 root 3 over 3. So 2 root 3 over 3 into f is equal to 5. Therefore f will be equal to 3 times 5 divided by 2 root 3. So 15 divided by 2 root 3 this is 5 root 3 over 2. So therefore f is equal to 5 root 3 over 2 Newton. So here we have the exact value of f. In the further calculations we are going to use this exact value and here we will state f is equal to 4.33 correct to 3 significant figures. But in further calculation I am going to use 5 root 3 over 2. In part b we are required to find the value of t. Okay, so t is equals to under root 3 over 3 into f. Therefore, t is equals to under root 3 over 3 multiplied by 5 root 3 over 2. Okay, so t will be equals to 5 into 3 divided by 6. So 5 times 3 divided by 6. t is equals to 5 over 2. t is equals to 2.5 Newton as simple as that. Therefore, the value of f is 4.33 Newton and t is equals to 2.5 Newton. So here we have solved the question number one of this paper.